Okay, so assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, my name is Ahmed Atiya. Um, today I'm gonna present to you our work on WDM radio over fiber, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, uh, quadrature amplitude modulation systems for wireless passive optical networks. Uh, my collaborators are Shayma Pahan and Arwa Musa from Al Nahrain University. Okay, let me just make the pointer here. Okay. Um, what is uh, I'm going to talk about today is enabling technology for passive optical networks uh, for uh, this application, which is mainly the radio over fiber uh, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing and quadrature amplitude modulation. Uh, how to create the radio over uh, frequency uh, or radio over fiber um, signals is typically we uh, take a laser light and then modulate it with an RF signal to create that that signal. Uh, and in terms of the of the M signals, typically we have a large number of orthogonal subcarriers where they each of one of the gonna carry a fraction of the overall bitrate of the system. Now the advantage of using uh, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing is the these signals are resilient to fading interference as, and multipath effects. Uh, they have uh, efficient uh, spectral uh, um, spectral uh, behavior because of the uh, large number of subcarriers can be used, uh, and also the they are resilient to inter simple interference caused by channel dispersion, either chromatic or polarization mode dispersion, and uh, the reason for that is because if each subcarrier will carry a lower uh, bitrate or baud rate depends on the modulation schemes you are using. Uh, and that would, would uh, enable the, the um, resilience to the intersymbol interference. Uh, all of the M signals also require um, a very uh, sim uh, simple uh, single tap equalizers and using uh, uh, Fourier transform efficient algorithms, Fourier trans uh, fast Fourier transform and inverse Fourier fast Fourier transform algorithms will enable resilience to fiber nonlinearity like cell phase modulation as well as phase noises of this in the system. In the uh, in this work, what we're trying to do is to increase the system capacity, increase the system reach, as well as to try to simplify the system compared to other uh, published work. And then we're gonna investigate the overall system performance. In this chart here, uh, we show a kind of implementation of a bus of optical networks, which serves different applications uh, in the, um, fiber to the premise in principle, where you have, for example, uh, wireless backbone or, or uh, businesses or homes or data centers as well. So all of these uh, kind of services can be uh, uh, serviced by the passive optical networks. And we're trying to address the need for higher bit rates as well as the distance between the, the different uh, uh, components and modules in the systems. Uh, in this chart here, we show uh, the general block diagram of the system we are in investigating, uh, including the, um, the WDM uh, of the M signal uh, in the uh, place in the OLT, the optical line terminal. And in it, as you can see here, we have a different uh, WDM, uh, DWDM signals, which can be controlled. The separation of the wavelengths can be uh, controlled by, by the system and they are multiplexed and then modulated with the data, as well as we, uh, in, in, in this work, we add the CW signal, which is gonna be used uh, for the uh, services here to do the upstream. So the, the users here will modulate the lasers, uh, which is uh, transmitted from the, from the upstream as well. And the modulation is done here using a reflective optical spectrum analyze, uh, spectrum amplifier. And um, in the OLT also, uh, so we have the uh, lasers which are used for carrying the data in the downstream, the CW lasers which are being modulated at the, uh, at the upstream stream. And then uh, in the second unit here is the, uh, um, the op uh, optical, uh, uh, the optical, distribution networking. And in this uh, unit here, we uh, kind of distribute the different wavelengths and uh, direct them into the, the proper path uh, in the signal as using the circulators and uh, the, uh, the muxes as well as uh, 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 splitters. Now, uh, in the, uh, the optical networking uh, unit, 
you have the users and in the users here we have the um, signals uh, in the downstream is going to be demodulated and detected as well as in the uh, in this unit here the users would uh, would modulate their data into the CW lasers coming from the OLT uh, using the reflective semiconductor uh, optical amplifier. Okay, and in this diagram here, we show you the uh, the simulation setup, which is used uh, 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 implemented using a, a commercial software from OptiWave uh, Systems. It, uh, this is Opti System software. And in, in, in this diagram here, I'm gonna show you the, the layout, which is uh, implemented in the software. So we have the laser. Uh, the simulation here at this time, we are using two, two, two DWDM wavelengths at um, uh, 193.1 terahertz and 193.3 terahertz. So it's 193.2 terahertz, separation by 100 gigahertz. And the CW lasers, which are used at the, uh, up, uh, for upstream at the ONU, uh, they are sitting at 193.16 and 193.26 terahertz, which is 60 gigahertz separation. And the, 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 the purpose of that, we chose the, this wavelength to represent a 60 gigahertz millimeter wave. Now, these uh, lasers are used for carrying the downstream data are modulated using a, a dual drive a Maxander modulator and using a data the data rate at this time, we, we investigated different rates, like 10 gigabit per second, as well as 40 gigabit per second, as I'm gonna show you later on. And uh, depends on the modulation, we used the QAM, four QAM, which is, means two bits per symbol, or 16 QAM, which used four bits per symbol. And this example here, which is uh, right now, I did calculation on it, uh, already, uh, already on it. I'm using uh, uh, 16 QAM, which is four bits per symbol. And that's why the, the bit rate, as you can see here, it's going from 10 gigabit per second and the symbol rate is 2.5 gigabaud. Now the uh, signal after it, uh, it's created to, uh, as a QAM signal, it's going to the OFDM uh, modulator where we have 512 uh, subcarriers out of 1,024 subcarriers. And these uh, uh, subcarriers are uh, carried over an intermediate frequency at 7.5 gigahertz. And then after that, it modulates the lasers, the two D, uh, DWDM lasers. And at this time is each one of the lasers modulated with the same data. data. Uh, and then it transmitted it through a fiber, which is, uh, we also investigate in this work, different reaches of the fiber. And this example is running at 150 gig, uh, kilometers. And there is a couple of amplifiers, as you see, and dispersion compensation in the system. And after that, you go to the, uh, the unit, which is uh, optical distributing networking, where you have, the, um, uh, you have the circulators, you have the DMUXs, you have the splitters to control where the signal is going. And then after that, as you can see here, we have the uh, signal, which is sitting at 193.16, which represents a 60 gigahertz millimeter wave. It's gonna be by using an uh, optical uh, filter. And eventually this is, has to be converted into microwave signal, as you can see, and then transmitted wirelessly. And at the same time, the signal, which is at 193.1 terahertz is gonna be detected using uh, regular uh, detection, as you can see here. If I go over to have direct detection here we have, and then after that you go into the demodulation of the uh, infra, uh, intermediate frequency, you bring it back to baseband, and then you go the OFDM demodulation, and then the EQAM uh, decoder. After that, you uh, pass it into the bit error rate system, and then you detect the, the signal. Okay, so the whole process is done here. Now, as you can see, uh, the uh, signal, which is um, a modulated signal here, as you can see, there is the two tones at uh, 193.1 and 193.3 terahertz uh, are modulated with the signal at uh, 2.5 uh, giga uh, baud. And then if you look at the signal after combined with the, with the uh, CW lasers, which are be, gonna be used into the, uh, at, at the upstream to modulate the signal. This is, as you can see here at CW, there is no modulation at these signals. And in the, uh, the upstreams, as we, as we discussed here, you have the reflective also A where you modulate the, the data coming from 
the upstream. So let me go back again to the presentation here. And then next is the, this is the uh, optical uh, spectra, as I showed you after combining the CW with the modulated signal. And this is the intermediate frequency spectra at 7.5 gigahertz. Uh, now, in this uh, chart here, I'm going to show you different uh, uh, kind of constellation diagram, which is typically we measure the uh, error vector magnitude as a, as a parameter plus bit error rate and simple error rate as parameters to, to quantify the quality of the transmission of the system. And the downstream signal, as you can see here, going to, through different reaches, and then we are using different bit rate here. We have using uh, four quamps, which means two bits per simple. And uh, we, we used it for the downstream signal and the upstream signal. And you can see that the constellation for the upstream signal is much better than the constellation of the downstream. One reason for that is because we are, for upstream, we are about not passing through the fiber. We're just using it uh, back to back. And, and we can assume that it's, uh, it's back to back. And then the 40 gigabit per second signals, as you can see, we cannot transmit that much of reach at 120. Uh, kilometers here, you can see that the constellation is very uh, kind of uh, crowded and then the error vector magnitude would be very high. However, when you do it with the upstream, uh, as you can see, compared to the 120, it is also, but still this is a good quality uh, transmission. The next here uh, chart, which we'll show you also shows the 16 quam uh, transmission now and uh, 10 gigabit per second systems and different reaches as you can see here. And we look at the constellation as well for the downstream signal and upstream signal. And you can see the difference between the, the different uh, systems. Now uh, you can notice that the, as you can see here between the upstream and downstream is the constellation for upstream is worse because the, this is coming from the reflective SOA because of the noise in the system. Okay, so this is something which needs to be uh, investigated. And then the, the paper, we will talk about it in, in more details. Um, this is then conclude the presentation here with some recommendation is just to, to describe that the uh, process to increase the capacity of the system and increase the reach in this kind of passive optical networks, you can use a combination of, uh, of the M and the quadrature modulation. And also you can avoid uh, placing lasers at the uh, uh, on use by transmitting the lasers uh, with the uh, with the signal at the uh, OLT, uh, OLT. And then also you can um, try to uh, support both wireless and wireless communication through the choice of the WDM signal. Okay, with this, I would like to thank everyone and then uh, we are open for questions. Thank you, bye.